Get ready for a test of the emergency broadcast system, the Forbidden History series, what they didn't want you to know, but we tell right here. Do tell your friends, won't you? Uh, you, you did tell your friends, right? Well, go on, call your friends right now because we've got the Forbidden History series coming up. Please note that the following views and the opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily the views nor the opinions of YouTube.com. The Master Force Group, Free America Radio Network, our sponsors, our partners, and MFG is a private society. Nothing here is ever to be construed as medical nor legal advice, nor hate speech. This program is the sole copyright and intellectual property of Desert Owl, the Master Force Group, all rights reserved. And listen to the Forbidden History Prime Time, seven days a week now, right here on the Real, realpublicradio.net, youtube.com. Because hidden beneath the sands of time lies the greatest of all mysteries. It's the forbidden history. Unearth for yourself the secret truths that lie hidden, just beneath the surface below our feet. What is it that the powers that be do not want you or I to know? Come and journey with us as we explore and dare to know, because it's all right here, coming your way, seven days a week now, on YouTube.com, therealpublicradio.net. What they didn't want you to know, but we tell, right here. Coming to you live from Studio Z at the Lighthouse in Central Ohio and Free America Radio Network in the land of dreams, enchantments, and nightmares. It's the Forbidden History Series. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the premiere edition of the Forbidden History Series. Take two after a year of uh, having computer crashes and the inability to get uh, everything together. So we're trying it. I'm your host, Desert Owl. Glad you're tuned in and hoping to make a... a a slight difference in our world, and uh, by uh, sharing with you uh, what uh, is has been important to me most all my life, the uh, the truth, uh, the truth that sets us free from the illu the grand illusion, and um, and so that's uh, that's coming up. Okay, we're gonna. I have I have so much material that will never run out. It's just a matter of being able to put it all, you know, in a proper order. So today on the on the premier edition, I'm going to. Uh, just um, give an outline of what I want to be talking about. Hopefully, we'll be able to get a test caller on the phone. I want to test the uh, the audio with the phone, and um, and I'm still uh, looking for an audio check on my my headset right now. Okay, but in the meantime, I'm going to share a little bit about the uh, the topics that I talk about, and um, so let me go uh, right here. So, uh, the signs of the times. In essence, I discuss the history of the world and how the unseen hand has been running it from the very beginning of time. Who are they? How they have founded all the first great civilizations that are all found around the world, about the who the giants really were, uh, the ancient Aryan caste and slave systems, the priesthoods, the anti-gravity vimanas, the earth-based misnomered UFOs, which are man-made, the control of all forms of communications, commerce, religion, mass media, pseudo-politics, on and on and on. It is the grand deception that is used by the control to control all mankind and all instituted through the three main religions of the world in particular and others used as their grand cover. The cyber code, their cyber code has been revealed to me because I have become adept within the study of the ancient alphabets, communications, symbolism, religion, custom, law, cosmology, cosmogony, and mythology. The, not to mention the fallacy of today's political science and pseudoscience in particular. I can also define the true nature of their warfare, their shell game of bringing one civilization up for their temporary use and then taking it down for the next 500-year generational cycle, as symbolized by the classical phoenix. I discuss the ultimate in mind control, an ancient art, and modern in, in today's world as well. And the financial control, the secret societies and their blood occult rituals, and how they wage all wars throughout all time, through the nations that they have created, which are all imaginations, plantations, and mere corporations. They have taken blood oaths to surrender their self-will and mind to their blood blind goddess, who has demanded our blood from the very beginning of time. They communicate to their minions through the movies, TV, and print media, while I can see, read, and interpret most all of it. 
It all says that they have that they are using us for their in, our ingenuity, for our collective constructive labor, for experimentation, and in the end, they intend to kill us all. Nice group of psychopaths, wouldn't you say? They have given us full notice of what they are doing and what they fully intend to do, while all of the general population, the sheeple, they merely go there to be entertained. The New World Order is the Old World Order, from the very beginning of time, at least from recorded history. There is a major cosmic natural disaster that is about to happen on Earth, and they know it. The reason they built uh, their uh, hundreds of underground bases uh, around the world. But they are cleverly leaving us out in the dark. Got your ticket? Hence the reason they have built all of these bases, okay? And um, while they're leaving all of the people to remain unprepared, uninformed, and above ground. So that when it comes, the mere 5% who will survive above ground, perhaps, will die then from the weaknesses, the diseases, and that have all been generated from all the poisons that they have been feeding us, not to mention they killed off all the food supply, which would be the fish and, and all the creatures of the forest uh, with all the chemtrailing. The chemtrails uh, to the fluoride in the water to taint, tainted vaccines, fake food, and on and on. They've enslaved us all by the clever means of deception because we, most of all, are their cattle, chattel property, and because they merely wanted to harness our labor, what they always needed which is what backs most all of the world's currency through the birth certificate, the security instrument, the sh you're the surety. But they are all through with us now, getting ready to close up shop. It is written in, the sto in stone as it can be seen written in the Georgia Guidestones. So to know the truth, to know the truth is to be empowered and to be prepared. We may not be able to stop what has been done, and what is about to happen. But certainly the innocent and the decent people on planet Earth deserve to know. Desert Owl. And so there you have that, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to welcome all of our friends out there. Uh, my friends, I want to say, uh, uh, all your thumbs up, I see. And uh, Lynn uh, Mitzi, thank you. And let me see. Uh, sounds great. Okay, audio's coming in good. Um, uh, ancient art, question mark. Okay, love matters. And um, you're you are correct, Blood O's, Yes. Okay. Well, it's great to you know have instant an instant audience. I got to tell you, when I was broadcasting on my other network, the Real Public Radio .net, I didn't even know who was listening. And now we get to see uh, wonderful people uh, coming on. And uh, hello, Prospero. Uh, have been looking forward to this. Okay. Very good. Uh, and uh, welcome aboard. So um, let me. Uh, I, I'm trying to follow a line of th thought here. So let me uh, continue on with uh, my uh, ad-libbing for a moment because, um, uh, you know, there's so much to talk about in the history. My, my big, you know, what really get, gets me is the, uh, uh, the difficulty to find, to find the answers to all of uh, our great dilemma, which is, you know, who are we, why are we, uh, when are we, where are we, you know, and, um, and, and most people uh, haven't a clue, even when people think they figured it out, they really haven't figured it out because it's like it's like layers of growth and a continual uh, progression. It's it's piercing the layers of the onion and you're getting a little closer to the center. And I and I have a saying, you know, once you get to the center of the onion, um, yeah, uh, the journey going through all that makes you want to cry. But but at the at the very core, it's all sweet. Uh, because, you know, I, I've always said, I don't care how bad it is, you know, just give me the truth and I'll learn how to deal with it, right? And, um, and uh, hello, y'all love, I see you're there as well. And um, made, have made a lot of wonderful friends over the last several months on uh, the YouTube uh, channel. And uh, so I'm just really uh, grateful. I, I just decided, you know, even though all my, all my data is on my other computer, I've got uh, programs I could rebroadcast and graphics, uh, wonderful graphics I was able to produce until my computer crashed. I've got uh, nothing on my new computer now, but I said, well, gee, why don't I just turn it on and see if I can't ad lib and uh, just start from scratch again. Um, and uh, I've got to do one thing, okay? i, I got to turn off that air conditioner. I'm getting chilled. Hang on. Right back. I know this is bad for radio, but we're the real public radio.
Uh, okay, and I want to thank you for that. Now, you know, in, in um, going on a lot of the other friends' channels, uh, like uh, Matt Rogers and Higher Truth Channel, and and a, uh, and, and a lot of uh, friends that are not even doing big productions, but just have, uh, 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 you know, a dozen, dozen or so uh, subscribers, and they're going out every day taking pictures of the sky. And, um, and then the, these, uh, these uh, gremlins come on, these uh, trolls. And uh, so just, uh, just before, about an hour ago, you know, I, wrote this, I wrote this down. I was trying to recharge and take a nap. Um, and uh, I'm over 60, of course, so I'm entitled to that. And, uh, and then I, um, you know, I wrote this down. Uh, regarding these trolls and these destroyers, you know, because I know that you, I know the issues. Okay, and knowing the issue is what it's all about, um, because that's all it's about are the issues. And but yet, anyone who spends their time attacking others actually has no legitimate position or presentation, not talking about the issue alone, and is thus a fraud upon mankind. Okay, so. First thing I do when I see those those attackers come, I go I go check out. I click on their uh, on their icon and I go to their uh, channel. And uh, guess what? Just like they're you know the the straw man doesn't have a brain, they've got nothing on their channel. Big tip off, okay? A big tip off. Uh, they've got nothing there because they have like five different channels they work off of. They don't have time to put content up there. They're just in there like the secret agent coming in and and attacking people. You know, so uh, I love to hit them right between the eyes. And um, so, and hello, Debbie R. Good to have you with us. And so, um, that's my my two cents on that. You can quote me. You can you can you know retype that into uh, their face, or uh, uh, just um, you know call a spade a spade, call a troll a troll, and uh, and don't uh, uh, you know engage them in the uh, the logical way, like you know they could actually think straight or be reasonable because they're not reasonable. They're they're paid agents to. Uh, uh, and, and I think that, the, and I've seen the clips of, you know, military, they got boiler rooms with mil guys dressed in military uniforms out here going against the people. Well, I guess that legitimate, uh, makes legitimate the, uh, War and Emergency Powers Act from 1933, where they declared all the people the enemy, right? They declared all the people the enemy. So, so go figure. Okay. They're spraying us to death. They're, uh, poisoning us with water, um, I call you and uh, love matter says I call it slapping inside the head. <laughs> okay, right. And uh, shout out ninja, good to have you too. Uh, okay, we're I'm just uh, getting my feet wet here. I feel you know after uh, my network went down uh, about five years ago, I did about six and a half years on the realpublicradio.net. You can go there. Uh, the the this, uh, you know the website's still there. Two hundred pages of a lot of information. And um, you know after. Uh, being like a fish out of water, imagine, you know, just doing uh, primetime production six hours a night, producing other programs for other people, then doing your own every night, seven days a week, nonstop for um, literally over six and a half years. And then all of a sudden you're not talking to anybody, your phone doesn't ring, and uh, you kind of uh, um, go through withdrawals. And, and not to mention, I, I, you know, went through quite a bit of a, a depression at times. Um, Wondered if I'd ever have a chance to share with uh, uh, everybody out there uh, the uh, you know the information and 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 so the Forbidden History series is um, um, you know it's not just one thing we've got the words that kill uh, we've got we've got um, lost writings um, I, I cover a wide area you know I did I did the the law I did seven day a week of law programming uh, brought on the best law researchers in the in the, in the nation because of the mass incarceration of innocent people by the judicial system. There is no law. When they declared us the enemy in 1933, uh, they, they moved away from actual law and common law and went under pu public policy. And that's what the word police means. It's policy, police, policia, police, policy. And, um, and But it's without notice. Uh, their whole job is just to keep the, the, the shell game and the illusion alive and... Um, you know, and uh, see if they can't keep us fooled. Uh, a lot of people waking up today. That's the good news. Um, I'm hoping that we can. So, and, and some of you, I think, know already that I'm a translator of the ancient scriptures. And, um, and therefore, I uh, have a real scope on the, uh, the, the, uh, the tricks that they played uh, with uh, our, our sacred writings 
uh, I, I, it's a big story. And this is what I'm going to go through throughout the, uh, the days ahead, a big story where, um, you know, I, I, for the longest time, I was probably in my late twenties when I already realized that they were abbreviating our words and that, um, that, uh, the, um, you know, the words were, the, these big words were made up of several smaller words. I could see the Indo-Germanic element in there. And then one day I find out about 10 years ago, reading the book called the, the uh, Secret Archives of the Vatican, and the uh, lady in there says that uh, they uh, actually uh, control the words outside the Vatican at a place called the College of Abbreviators. So go figure, okay? They tell you right what it is, College of Abbreviators, run by the Jesuit, Curiae. They put the cure in your eye. And with that mortar board on head on your head when you got graduated, you know, then uh, you got mud in your eye. So uh, they're having a party on us, and and, and you got to be able to read the symbols. It was Confucius who said, you know, the um, symbol uh, signs and symbols rule the world, and not law nor words. Okay, so signs and symbols that's where they're shouting at us. And so uh, so anyway, I want to have a caller generated program. And, and I, I, I've got, uh, I started studying ancient history when I was 14 years old. I'm 62 now. And so that's what about, um, I don't know, uh, over 50 years of study, near, near 50, give or take, 48 years. And, uh, and then 30 years, the last uh, 28 years as a political activist, when I learned the rest of the story, because I was basically into the ancient past and words and translations. And, uh, but I had to have the experience of a political activist, two organizations, and um, persecution, um, uh, lost my house on a lake uh, with, with a dock and a canoe that was just like paradise right out my backyard, off my deck. And, um, you know, uh, that was out in East Texas. I've been through the mill. And, um, and when you get persecuted, you, you begin, you, you suddenly know who the enemy is, you know, because they're coming at you. You've done nothing. You gave everything you had to a cause. And then all of a sudden... You know, okay, well, I think these, these people call themselves Christian patriots, and now they're, you know, attacking me. So uh, clearly these were the secret agents that uh, uh, put on a, uh, the hat and the guise of uh, brotherhood and, and um, you, you know, uh, Christianity. And then you find out that they got a, a blood oath, and they're here uh, basically to uh, deceive and to harm society. So uh, I've seen them all. Okay, I've seen it all. I. I've, uh, I've been, I, my story, it would take a couple of days to tell my story as a political activist, really. Uh, so anyway, by the grace of the Heavenly Father, I'm here, uh, by Yeshua, his, uh, his protection, uh, have had, uh, multiple attempts on my life, four alone with automobiles. I've got to watch everywhere I walk because, um, even today I'm being persecuted and, um, you know, and so that's why I don't have my picture up on the screen. I don't care to have my mug up there, uh, you know, so they can get a better scope on me if the, the new punk is looking for me, you know, so I, uh, as much as I'd you know, like to um, be more graphic, but uh, uh, for the moment, we'll stay like this. And, um, and so, you know, call our generator program. You said a mouthful desert. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> okay. And I'm sorry, I can't read everybody's message there. I just looked up and saw that. So thank you. Um, and I've got a lot, a mouthful more to go. So, um, you know, a caller generated program means, you know, I want to be able to, I, I've, in other words, I've answered all my questions. Okay. I've, I, I've got a lifetime of study. I hit the books. Um, and, uh, and, and I, and I, and I've watched all the documentaries that are out there. All I do is I'm a sponge. I'm a, I absorb and it's because I want to know. Okay. It's be, it's, it's because I want to know so I can, you know, like the scripture says to make your calling and election sure. Okay. Make your calling and election sure, too, because there's no guarantees. You know, it's a matter of uh, continuing, as the scripture says, in well-doing. In uh, like, you know, with what he's done with me, with uh, information, you know, if I were to sit on this uh, knowledge that he's given me, um, then uh, he would say, okay, well, how come I gave you that talent, that one big talent, and, you know, and gave you the uh, ultimate software download, and then you didn't tell anybody? So, so what I want, what I, I, what I perceive is that most people are too busy working, or the, or, uh, or the, the, the big web that they wove is so, so big and powerful that nobody will ever figure it out. You know, it, it's, it's a real shell game, and it's just because the, the Father of Light has uh, caused me to be adept in symbolism, ancient mythology. I studied world religions. I studied 
uh, I collected lost writings. You know, all of that is relevant. The pieces I, I re read dictionaries. Okay, I read dictionaries. I, uh, I all of this is relevant because you never know where the next gem is going to pop up. And so, what I wanted to do was, I, I know that people out there have still have questions in their own mind about something. They're still trying to figure something out. And so, right here. You know, I'm I'm happy to uh, take your call if you want to call in. All right, now the the uh, and I have a conference system ultimately that I'll be putting up. I just didn't go to that length right now because I just know we're not going to have a lot of calls at first. But if you want to call in, I want to test also my uh, my uh, system and make sure uh, it can come through okay. So we do have to do a test. But the number is six zero eight five six six seven two nine five. That's six zero eight five six six seven two nine five. And I can, I can stop what I'm doing or, you know, and uh, shift gears in order to take your call. So if you've got a, a question, you know, or, or uh, an observation or a complaint, whatever it is, you know, and I'm sure a lot of those uh, double troubles will be calling in too. So, uh, you know, um, my only rule is let's have fun and let's try to figure things out. Okay. So, so continuing on here. Oh, and, uh, and so that's the phone number again, 608-566-7295. Then the Skype is um, Free America Radio, all one word, Free America Radio. And that's, uh, it still says Kingsland, Georgia. I'm no longer, I'm in central Ohio, no longer in Kingsland, Georgia, but it still says that, okay? And you then you can instant message me if you just want to, you know, you like you don't want to get on the phone and you just, but you like to type a question, then you could uh, put it on the Skype instant messenger. And that's a way, because uh, that'll be, a way I can tell if you got a comment or a question. It's hard to do it on that chat, you know. So, uh, but on Instant Messenger on Skype, or you can call in on Skype if you'd rather not use the phone. You want to go computer to computer, alrighty. And so, so real quick, I, I'm going to run down the, uh, the 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 approach that I'm going to take with this uh, uh, presentation. And I, I want I know most of you out there are sky watchers, and so therefore I wanted to address the issue of sky watch first. Then we're going to go into a a book review. Every day I'm going to share with you a gem of a book, and um, probably not today. I may show I may show you my the biggest dictionary in the world. I may turn the camera on for that and uh, show you that. But um, starting tomorrow, we'll, um, you know, I'll be in the regular program uh, arena. But then uh, I've got the great lies of history, and uh, and so every day I'm going to share another lie. Off the top of my head, I was able to write down a prototype for a book called The Great Lies of History. 350 lies. Off the top of my head, from all of my interviews, all my studies, you know, just it was like when I had lost my apartment in Georgia, I, I wasn't in front of a computer for about a year. And so I just did that in like 30 days, wrote down uh, 350 plus lies of history. So so I'm not short on material and you're going to hear stuff. I guarantee you, you've not heard anywhere else, you know. And uh, then um, uh, in a word, I'm going to I'm going to address one word every day. And then, uh, then go into a, a sample read of the original gospel, and um, and so that's basically the outline. But so let me let's take it one step at a time here. So sky watchers, um, we all know something's going on, and uh, and this this may be a reason you want to call in right now if you got a report, you know, you want to share on this topic. But um, I've been watching the sky for over twenty years actually, and I saw the very heavy aerosol spraying, aka chemtrails, uh, going on. I'm looking, I'm reading my board for a minute. Message, one minute. Um, I don't know what that means. I'm still learning the system here. But, uh, you know, uh, I saw the heavy heavy chemical spraying uh, 20 years ago, 1998. 1997, I saw, and I was going over the road in my big truck, surveying people, interviewing, and going coast to coast, back and forth after my divorce. And uh, and I and I, that was the summer without, that was the summer without a summer, uh, 1997. And then at the end of the uh, year in September, all of a sudden the news comes on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, but there was uh, this year, 1997, has been a record heat summer. Record heat. And I'm going like, what? What? I just went all over the country. There was no summer. It was a perpetual spring in 1997. And there was that propaganda again. They got to keep talking to you because people don't pay attention anyway. So therefore, if we say it enough times, they're going to believe it. Um, and so that's when I saw the weather start to change, the anomaly. And then the next year, 1998, is when I saw the heavy chemical aerosol spraying that I can remember. I wasn't looking up quite hard enough yet, perhaps. Uh, but we know uh, 
thanks to people like uh, uh, Matt Rogers, Skywatcher, and also uh, Higher Truth Channel, Mr. MB333, uh, Mr. MBB, I think it is, 333. Uh, you know, these people, um, we know that we, oh, and Dane Wigington, of course, Dane Wigington. Uh, we, uh, we know, we know that uh, uh, they've been doing it for a long time, like 70 years, okay? And so uh, what I think I want to do is give out my hot, my hot list for any new people that stumble in. I know most of you there on the board right now, you know the score and you know uh, who the important people are th uh, to listen to. But I'm going to run down the hot list in my priority order from top down. It's uh, Dane Wigington, and that's his channel, Dane, D-A-N-E, Wigington, W-I-G-I-N-G-T-O-N. Dane Wigington, and, uh, and then he has geoengineeringwatch.org geoengineeringwatch.org, and I've been listening to Dane for a decade, okay, 10 years. This guy, man, uh, I, I pray for him, you know, because he's on the front line, the tip of the needle, with his Saturday broadcast. I'm sure most of you have heard it, and um, and there's there's nobody more uh, astute and able to, you know, bring out the uh, essence, you know, with all the, the techno techno uh, the, uh, technological terms and what have you. So Dane Wigington, love him. And then Higher Truth Channel, uh, who is getting beaten up right now by some of the uh, the trolling uh, double agents on the internet? And um, Higher Truth Channel, you know, he's had two two attempts on his life. He's hanging out with um, other naturopaths that are still alive, while uh, a handful of his friends, dozens of his friends, have been murdered over the last uh, three uh, three years by the pharmaceutical deep state. And include that includes my last classic interview. You you'll see uh, uncommon awareness on my channel. Uh, in those pre-recorded uh, pictures of the sun, uh, one through ten, and that was Dr. Lorraine Hurley, a medical doctor, and uh, Dr. Lorraine, uh, you know, quit the profession, gave up the big money so that she could expose the vaccination fraud and the pharmaceutical fraud. And so, uh, at six months after she did that interview with me on Uncommon Awareness on my channel, the uh, Forbidden History series, four words, the Forbidden History series, she. Uh, she was run over on her bicycle, okay? She was one of the 20-plus uh, doctors killed that year, mostly naturopaths and, and chiropractors. But um, uh, now the list is right near 100, and they're also going after the lady doing the list. Uh, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but uh, a very brave lady in, in Florida. So Higher Truth Channel, yeah, he got poisoned the last time, and he ended up in a hospital. Now he's in a safe house. He's had to relocate uh, to protect himself. And... Um, Higher Truth Channel. He's a naturopathic doctor. This is his credibility. Okay, this is why he's next to Dane Wigington. Higher Truth Channel is the most important channel uh, to listen to, and there and there and there's some people hot on taking him down uh, because he said he shows the report. He's he's the only one showing the charts of the UVB and UVC radiation from the scientific uh, websites. Okay, uh, he's. Um, uh, uh, not only a naturopathic doctor trying to help save lives and giving us the protocols uh, how to protect ourselves from the high levels of UVC and UVB radiation, but he's a three-generation uh, family of physicists, and that's why he can give us such an astute um, presentation on his channel. And then uh, number three is Mr. MBB333, uh, his channel, uh, he and he gives the daily readings of the UVB and C. And there are no safe levels. There is no safe level of UVB or C, ladies and gentlemen. And that's um, my biggest concern for my friends out there. They go out every day. I'm watching them take pictures of the sun. And I'm just thinking, you know, do they, do they get the picture? We're in a microwave oven. People are getting sunburned with their pants on. Okay. Right through the clothing. This is so, this is so serious. Um, you can see trees dying all over all over the world right now. If you do uh, uh, a search for uh, trees and forests dying in New Zealand or trees and forests dying in Australia, trees and forests dying in Madagascar, trees and forests dying in Canada, trees and forests dying in the Sierra Mountains, trees and forests dying in the Rocky Mountains, trees and forests dying in Europe, you will blow your mind and see trees the entire side of the mountain, like the beautiful Sierra Mountains, the trees are dead. Okay? Tree and they and then what are they blame it on? Drought. Well, guess what? If you know 
about tree rings. Trees don't die when there's a drought. They just stop growing. They go into hibernation. We're talking about the big ponderosa pines, the spruces and all those type of trees. They're all dead because they were killed by the, the UV C radiation in particular, UVB, no doubt. Synergistic, they're, they're getting it all. You know, and uh, so, uh, and then also uh, continuing on the list, Matt Rogers, Skywatcher. Uh, Matt is, uh, you know, the finest gentleman over there in England. He's just a great uh, friend of, uh, you know, of our planet and of, of all of us. And he, he gives it, uh, he just was sick. You know, don't know what happened to him, but he's worked himself sick. And he uh, obviously he's taking a lot of time from his family to do this. He's married. So um, hats off to Matt Rogers. It's uh, Matt Rogers, Skywatcher. And then uh, StopTheCrime.net, uh, Stop the Crime New, I think. Uh, no, StopTheCrime.net New, I believe it is. New comes after net. That's a channel, StopTheCrime.net New. That's Deborah, uh, Deborah, um, oh, I'm forgetting her name all of a sudden. Uh, friend, a friend of my friend uh, out in California. Deborah Travaris, Deborah Travaris, uh, and... Uh, She's uh, she's one of the most astute uh, people that is uh, exposing the Agenda 21 and uh, was involved with helping to expose the, uh, the Project Blue Beam that burned up about, uh, I don't know, how many thousands of homes uh, in uh, California. And then uh, do what you can do, do a YouTube search for uh, Biol... What's this one? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, there's a Canadian prepper. Uh, biologist predicts how civilization collapses soon. Um, uh, I th is it, oh, it's on the Canadian Prepper channel. So there's a really good one. This biologist is like down in, uh, in um, he's in uh, Central America, what's it, Belize. And you look behind him and you see all of this ozone, all of this ozone in the air. It looks like smog in the beautiful tropical forest of Belize. And he tells in 45 minutes how within about two years, I, uh, I don't remember his presentation. I watched it twice. Two or five years, it's all over. Okay? He's telling the truth. He moved. He, he obviously quit his job, and that's why he went to Central America. So, so there's, there's real heroes that have come forward, that are, that are coming forward right now, telling it like it is. And so the protocols, um, Higher Truth Channel is the only one giving us the protocols. And this is what I wanted to do for all my friends. You know, make sure they, they know this stuff. Uh, because uh, and you've got to go listen to his back issues, because he, he does you know a periodic uh, once every other week presentation. But I wish I I've been I've been listening to him for for a year, and I wish I would have been listening to him for about three years. Okay, the, the guy is a genius. It too, and I just got I was so diverted doing the other stuff, you know, research that I that I missed it. And then but for the last year, and uh, so you go to his back issues. He's got one about two months ago that says warning. That's a good one. Uh, on certain ones, he give the protocols, but I've got them here, okay? So the protocols, number one, uh, the, the symptoms of the UVB and the C, if you're not familiar with it, is, um, you know, the uh, is going to be uh, cataracts and a heart attack and uh, a hernia. And that's because the, uh, the UVB and C break down the DNA. It goes right through your body. It goes right through the earth. It goes right through your house, right through your clothing. And uh, that's why the more protection you have on, the better. You've got to wear a big, you know, floppy hat. You, you got to protect the back of your neck. The brainstem is exposed. There's no bone covering the brainstem. So that's the most vital part of your body right there. And everybody bends over to work in the garden, in the yard, you know, and you can't do that. You got to, you got to have protection. Now we're in a new ball game, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So, so, uh, for your heart. Oh, oh, oh by the way, a friend, my former co-host, uh, say John, the Ohio River called me a couple weeks ago and said, by the way, her daughter has a friend, six-year-old, went to the hospital with a heart attack. A six-year-old. Did you ever hear that before? I never did. I called my landlord uh, in Georgia to let him know about this stuff, you know, out of courtesy. And um, a couple months ago, and he and I told him about the symptoms. And he says, you know what? I just had a hernia operation. I don't didn't even know why I had a hernia. You know, he doesn't do hard labor. Uh, so, so the, it's happening. Okay. It's all around us. The plants dying right out the front of my apartment. My plants are dying evergreens, three different species dying. Okay. Three different species dying. I saw it start to happen at the beginning of spring. 
So for your heart, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you need to be taking coenzyme Q10, okay? Co CoQ10, or I think is how they call it, CoQ10 enzyme, and also calcium and potassium, coenzyme Q10 for the heart, uh, calcium, potassium um, for the system, for the heart as well, I believe, and then alpha, I can't even pronounce this, alpha lipoic, alpha lipoic acid. I'm not sure what that's good for, but that's also his recommendation. And then uh, a, a daily dose of chlorophyll. Okay, the chlorophyll is, uh, uh, I think, an overall tonic for your body. And, uh, and then for, uh, for uh, removing aluminum from your body, horsetail. Okay, horsetail. But then also, you know, distilled water is really uh, the best water to be drinking. It'll, it'll purge the toxins out with what you're breathing in every day. And, um, you, uh, you know, what, what's, what's confronting us, I, I drink distilled water. It took me, and I had a couple of health programs, you know what, but the, but the propaganda on the, the con issue was so great that, I, that it took me just until uh, last year to really get the, the picture on that. It, it is uh, distilled water that, that uh, will purge out the negative uh, chemicals and metals out of your body, but it does not remove, does not remove, uh, it does not remove the, uh, the good minerals in your body, okay? That was the propaganda. And uh, there's a good report uh, on the distilled water if you want to find it. Uh, somebody who used to interview me, uh, Vinny out of New Zealand, uh, Vinny, uh, what's his name, Vinny, uh, well anyway, just do a search for distilled water, uh, uh, interview by Vinny out of New Zealand, and uh, it's a 45-minute presentation, and that'll answer, or 90-minute, I think, and that will answer your questions. Okay, so so any updates on Skywatch, that's the first issue I want to approach. Again, if you want to call in, 608-566-7295, still need an audio check on my uh microphone to see if I, my phone is going to pick up. I'd like to just do a, a test today. And, and if you call in and, and, um, and do that for me, then I'll give you a free copy of, uh, of the Real Da Vinci Code Etymological Dictionary. Okay. And uh, how about that? So uh, now the book review, starting tomorrow, I'm going to do a book review and it's going to be um, in priority order. I'm going to share the most powerful books uh, that, um, uh, you know, uh, are, are, are my spiritual inspiration, you know, the, the lost writings of uh, the best Bible translation. And look at this. Do we have a caller coming out of Pennsylvania? I think we do. Let's see here. Test the system. Test, test. Is that one of uh, the listeners to the Forbidden History series? Hi. Yeah, I, I was calling, uh, is this radio program? You've got me. This, this is Desert. And who's this? First name in... <laughs> Yeah, well, better late than never, right, Prospero? <laughs> oh, my God. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, as I wrote on uh, one of my comments, that, that, you know, you said you were going to just start speaking extemporaneously about things with you, I think. But I, could, I wrote, well, you've got enough content in your head to, uh, to go on and on and on without actually taking a phone call. But at any rate, I'm delighted that your uh, program has gotten started. Well, absolutely. Uh, thank, thank you, um, you know, for um, stopping in. I don't remember seeing you before, so I'm just glad you uh, stumbled in somehow and and uh, joined joined our group. I've I've made some wonderful friends here of late on, you know, on uh, the YouTube channels and just been been listening. That's all I've been doing. And I said I got to stop this. I got to start figuring out how to get this, uh, you know, YouTube channel going. <laughs> and so I and I'm not a geek. I'm not a geek at yeah. all. Go ahead. You know what? Thank you so much. Well, that's what I, that was my opener. You probably didn't hear it. I said, get ready for a test of the emergency broadcast system, the Forbidden History series. What they don't, didn't want you to know, but we tell right here. So do tell your friends, won't you? Hey, come on. You did tell your friends, right? 
get on that phone right now and tell your friends. Come on. That's how I do. That's how I always used to do it. Um, so, so you're right on. Thank you so much, uh, Prospero. And, um, now, um, my email is contact at freeamericaradio.com. If you email me there, uh, I'll reply back with the attachment, the PDF of the 300 page book. Okay. I have all the time in the world. What are you talking about? Go ahead. Yeah, the Real Da Vinci Code Etymological Dictionary. It was a prototype I did in 2011. It's 300 pages. And I, it was the hardest thing for me with um, when I'm dealing with uh, the Indo-Germanic mother tongue, also Aramaic, it's Aramaic, you know, the Indo-Germanic mother tongue. This is part of the story of what I'll be talking about. Um, it, it wasn't easy because I can't, I, if I go too far back into the archaic, people will just look at it and get cross-eyed. So I had to find the blend of being able to present uh, what is most ancient, what was breathed into Hadam, uh, pre predating the Greek and the, he and the Hebrew by 5,000 years. Okay, taking it back to the beginning. Um, this is what I'm what I'm doing. So it wasn't, you know, it was a rough. It took me ten years of prep uh, just to figure out how to do the dictionary after the 25 years of prep, just studying. You know, in other words, it's been a long journey. So I've got 40 years of preparation right now with what I'm doing. Over 40, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah well, you know what? I, I was looking for it. Is it only in a PDF form of Absolutely. Right now, uh, that's been the case because there's no money in our project to, you know, to publish. And so, so my goal is in the long run here, I see YouTube uh, really has a lot of potential. I'm hoping that there will be a, um, you know, a, a host of uh, followers that'll come in and follow the program and then uh, want to support uh, the translation project. I've got a, a book I just finished uh, transliterating uh, called the book of wisdom. And I want to get that to people in prison, you know, because they're the people that are suffering the most. And, uh, and have the most time to read. And the Book of Wisdom by Joseph of Arimathea, the great uncle of Yeshua, Jesus, um, is, a, is a classic. And I'll be sharing that and making that available as well. Uh, what happened, all my data is still on my old computer. I got to get it on my other computer. And I, I've been waiting since February for a technical geek uh, to help me out. He's been uh, real busy. And I, and I don't know anyone else. And, and I can't ask anyone around where I'm at here because I'm being persecuted. And, and they stole 20,000 of my files already when I went to them for help one time, so I can't make the same mistake twice. Oh God. Yeah, wow. yeah, that's the nature of uh, knowing too much. You know, they yeah, come... Yeah, yeah, and you certainly got it. Uh, like I said, I was, I was binge listening to uh, a lot of your uh, YouTubes on uh, your uh, Desert Box channel. I couldn't even believe it. I was like, this guy is just loaded with information. It is not believe what you could just uh, there's not enough time in the day. Yeah, you know, were you, was that the... Everything flows and everything else, and it's all the kind of yeah, conflict grace and moment right now, which is ideal for your time of coming out with it. It's really quite amazing. Right, and, and so was that the Uncommon Awareness interview with Dr. Lorraine when she interviewed me you were talking about? Yeah, yeah. I probably listened to like five, six, seven of those effectively, right? Right. right. Okay. And, yeah. and how tragic is that with all the, the, uh, the doctors? That, yeah, it is up to nearly 100 right now, natural. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. And she, it's just, yeah. and she walked away from her Christianity to about two years prior and was following a lot of that insanity that's on the Internet with, you know, kind of like a New Age philosophy and stuff. And so I just, uh, I, love, I love the lady. You know, she uh, was so, so special. I told her she couldn't save the world. I couldn't convince her. I said, hey, look, I've been there, done that. You know, and, and you think you're going to save the world. And um, and don't you know, you know, she did. She didn't last six months. Uh, that's the lesson I learned when I was en ended up on a concrete slab looking at a concrete ceiling, um, you know, being persecuted 20 years ago, being, uh, uh, you know, the victim of a government sting operation. And I survived that. And I got post-traumatic stress today, but I'm still uh, still hanging in, you know. Right on. Right on. Okay. So, uh, terrifically happy that you're doing this. And uh, I'll let you get back to whatever you're doing. And uh, real quickly, once again, what was it? Free America, which, what, their radio? Is that what the, uh, your email is? Yeah, it's contact at freeamericaradio, freeamericaradio.com, okay? Okay. Yeah. And, All right, well, we'll talk to you soon, and, uh, and uh, glad I can be your help on the network. Hey, you, you were, and that way I can listen back on it and see how the balance is. Somebody wants to tell me how the balance is on the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the chat room. Hey there, Barb. 
Uh, give me a heads up on how the microphone came through on the phone. That's my big question. Can I do this with the phone, putting it up to my headset? Okay. So that's what I did. Prospero, thank you so much for calling in and we'll uh, chat again, hopefully. Okay. All right. Enjoy. Take care, brother. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. And uh, back to it. And um, I've been following the work of uh, uh, Barbara Nanda, uh, who's there. I, I love Arizona. What's this? I got another call. Oh, that went to voicemail. Okay. I know. I know who that was. Um, uh, they'll, they'll call back. Uh, do call back, okay? If you don't get in, I can only take one call out of time. Now, so I was going to talk about the book review. And, um, and oh, okay, so I had a mini presentation on uh, the word read, okay? But before I do that, I, I want to show everybody the biggest dictionary in the world. I figure, you know, I can do that. Let me see if I can get my mug uh, going on here. Hang on. Uh, boom. And... Boom. Okay, there I am. Peace, everybody. And so I'm going to uh, take my headset off for a minute and grab it. No, I don't have to. Hang on. I just thought everybody would look, really get a kick out of this. You know, you th I, I tell you I like dictionaries, right? But you, you you probably think, well, you know, everybody's got a dictionary, right? But I don't think you have this dictionary. Here we go. Okay. Let me move my phone. Hang on. Ugh. That, ladies and gentlemen is the Oxford Dictionary. This Oxford Dictionary is an encyclopedia in one book. Okay, that's why you need a mag... There's a magnifying glass that goes with it. And uh, let, me see, let me pull it back. Let me pull it back here. Here we go. The bit, I, I have to work real hard just to look up a word when I get this book out, okay? So this is uh, the Oxford Dictionary. It was like over 40 years in production. And it's every word in the English... In the English language, from every literary work of the uh, ancient past moving forward, and they they take you to every time the word was used in every hundred year cycle, and show you how the word changed over time. Okay, Lynn, you said, "Wow, right, you got it." And I and I only have to force myself to take this book out to look up a word like, "Who wants to hold this thing?" You know, it's like fifty pounds, and um, so only when I can't find it in any other dictionary, then this is where I go. Okay, and so I can talk words, and I can talk I can talk books. Okay, <laughs> and so just thought I showed that. So now let me pull this down here and uh, on to the next presentation. And uh, so we're dealing with a word. Okay, the next the next feature uh, is uh, well that was that was going to be in the words. Okay, no, I'm not there yet. Okay, excuse me. Okay, let me put that back because uh, I. Um, I got conf I confused myself. In my uh, what was it? What was that about? The book review. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll go ahead and do it now because I, I I got you uh, keyed in. So so the word read. I'm going to do one my word thing right now. The word read. What's going on here? I'm going to go back to. Uh, I'm getting confused with my screen, so I'm going to go back to my Antarctic picture. Okay, so there we go. All right. So the word read uh, is actually a code, uh, ladies and gentlemen, okay? And it means to re-add. And now that's, you know, not simply my interpretation, but I found it in one of my dictionaries, okay? So I'm going to go through a couple of them and just show you how, what, what literally it means is to re-add the riddle. And this is the problem we have with words, okay? We, we, um... We would never imagine, you know, like when we came into the world, well, you know, my, my preacher wouldn't lie to me, my politician wouldn't lie to me, my teacher wouldn't lie to me. But, um, you know, whether they're consciously lying or they just are repeating the lie, uh, I'm, you know, we can at least give them the benefit of the doubt they're just repeating the lies because we've all been spoon-fed them from the beginning. But bottom line is uh, we, uh, we've been lied to. And so, so the codes are everywhere, and this is uh, what I'll be talking about on the program every day. And so, the big, I thought I'm trying to do things in a logical order, and you know, to prime you. And so, literally, read is two words, and it means to re-add. And and what that one definition I had found meant was to re-add the riddle. Okay, so that's what you have to do with words. And um, and I'm going to give you another interesting one here in a minute. That's uh, relative. So here's one definition in one book. Uh, uh, yeah, read the riddle. Here it is right here. And this is in the uh, Etymological Dictionary of Modern English 
uh, from about 120 years ago. Read the riddle, okay? And it's uh, he gives the origin of uh, you know being an etymological dictionary. So that's so one definition. And then uh, this next one, I just want to show you the variables here. Okay, this is a uh, either the puzzle or solving the puzzle. So the definition of read means it's a puzzle, or if you re-add the riddle, then you can solve the puzzle. Okay, they tricked us with words. They, if they, and whoever controls the words controls your thinking. Okay, in the next dictionary here. Next one. Okay, here it is. To read, to read the in the in words. Okay, to read the in words. In other words, the secret or the mystery. There's something going on with the words. Just like uh, the word I'm leading up to is uh, is uh, gospel. You know, I'm, I was going to share that because, you know, it, originally the, the word was evangel. They called all what well, we call the four gospels. Uh, originally it was called the evangel or the evangelon. Okay. And then one day all of a sudden, boom, they say, well, you know what? We need to change this word because um, we don't want people to get the picture of what the evangel might mean. And so, therefore, let's change the word. And so, they had a little fun with us. And if and I suggest you get a, a pen and paper because it's a good way to follow and, and to remember by writing down. But the word uh, gospel uh, originally was spelt with two L's. So it's actually it was, and that's the first King James. Okay, two L's. G O S P E L L. Take a look at it. Do you see two words there? I'd like to give, be able to give out a prize for anybody who can can do it because it's pretty easy. It's go spell. They're telling you with the trans literary work that it's go spell. And it looks like I've got a call coming in. I'll be glad to uh, take it. I haven't had so much fun in a long time. I can't tell you. Uh, and uh, Oregon, you're on the air. Who's this? First name. Hey, Lynn, I've... Uh, been following your uh, YouTube channel, and um, you're out there in the sun all the time. I hope you're safe doing it. And uh, how you doing? Good time. Good talking to you for the first time. Good, good talking to you. Real good talking to you. Thanks so much for your time you're taking here on the YouTube. It's very impressive. Well, well, geez, I got I'm I'm raring to go after uh, my uh, my lull in um, not talking to anybody, my phone, I can go a couple weeks and nobody call me. You know, it's like I, I'm done chomping at the bit. You know, you can't go outside the door and talk to regular people about what's going on. Yeah, I think you know that, right? No, they think you're crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get funny. I'm crazy. Yeah, I, I sometimes want to kick myself after I just did it to somebody, you know, and and like they're not ready to take the red pill. You know, it could it could create a maybe, I don't know. You know, you never know. Um, so, so, um, so when when did you have your? And by the way, with Prospero, who just called in, I, I assume you were able to hear that conversation, right? I was, I was. Okay. So how did he come in? I know I'm coming in loud and clear, but was he coming in loud and clear as well? He's coming louder, but I'm just about sixty years old and a little. I don't care very well. <laughs> so I think he was Okay. Okay. Well, I should have watched the monitor gauge because I got a gauge on my uh, OBS system. I just didn't think to do that, uh, Lynn. So, uh, so Lynn, what is your uh, YouTube? Uh, well, you're on there. Everybody sees you there. But uh, give out, give out your uh, YouTube if people want to find your your sky uh, research. You're uh, taking pictures every day. Lynn Right, and and so when did you when did you have uh, a wake up, uh, Lynn? Flying from the West Coast to the East Coast, and we were somewhere over Chicago, and you'll see it on my channel. It's the first video. Yeah. I think I saw two suns. You did what? Saw two suns. Oh, you saw two suns. Well, that'll wake you up a little bit, won't it? And the pilot kept saying, everybody put all your devices away. We're experiencing turbulence now. If you watch the video, it was a sunny day. There was no turbulence. And then he said, 
if you're not in compliance, if your neighbor isn't in compliance, tell someone, shut off all devices now. Whoa, so the pilot was in on the scam. That's how I took it. Hmm. And I was trying to record holding the phone and away no one could see it was on. Yeah. Well, that's very disappointing. I would I would want to think those pilots are neutral, and now it looks like they're under military orders. It sounded military. It was on fire service, and it just sounded military. Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, that's a shame. And if you're not in compliance, somebody tells somebody, I'm like, this is crazy. There's no turbulence. Yeah. Yeah. That's why a lot of the judges uh, railroad a lot of innocent people into prison because they're also military reserves. And a lot of times they're given orders. They have to put somebody in prison because they know too much, you know, that type of thing. Uh, so uh, wo wonderful world, uh, Mrs. Smith, right? So so anyway, anyway, uh, Lynn, I, I, I'm uh, nice talking to you. It's hard to get uh, the YouTubers uh to pick up the phone and call and say, hi, I've been hitting up a bunch of friends out there just wanting to say hello to somebody, you know, and, and so I guess I finally figured out the trick because I got two callers in a row. So <laughs> that's, that's great. And so I want you to know, I'm sorry. I'm really impressed with your work. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, it's, it's not me, you know, I'm not smart enough, uh, Lynn. It's the grace of, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit, the great, what I, what in the original thought is the great breath of the wind and fire. Oh, the, the pure breath. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. This is, you know, isn't that a profound statement? The great breath of the wind and fire. Hallelujah. You know? Yeah, that's that's your, how they talk, talk back then. You see, and we then now condense, capsulate everything in a, in a word that's got no deeper, you know, rhythm going on. And this is where I'm going to show how the original, how they spoke in the original. So that's uh, coming up. And I just decided I'm going to do it every day because, uh, you know, the time is so short. It, it, it hardly, with, with what we're looking at in the sky, you know, it don't. To me, it's so profound, uh, you know, these uh, sky anomalies that I, I can't Im hardly imagine we have uh, till the end of the year left. Is that how you see it? I, I wonder. I know I'm going to see the coming of our Lord. I know I am. Mm -hmm. I know I am. Yeah. Well, well, it's just uh, interesting times, and it's just nice to uh, be hanging out with some wonderful people, and I'm just uh, um, honored by that, you know. So, uh, so then, anything else you want to say before we uh, continue here? All right. Don't be a stranger. You've got my phone number now, okay? You take care. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. And that was Lynn Mitzi. Okay. And she's on the chat there as well. So as I was saying was they were spilling the beans, uh, ladies and gentlemen, on the word gospel because it means to go spell. I mean, they're telling you. Remember, read the riddle. You got to reread it again. And there it is. Go spell because that's what I'm going to be talking about with the words in our scriptures, because um, I'm going to prove out to you that when our, and you know, we follow an Eastern tradition. We follow an Eastern tradition within uh, the Mashiach, Yeshua Hep Mashiach, uh, who we commonly call Jesus the Christ in the Western tradition is Yeshua the Mashiach. <clears throat> and, um, but when it came from the East into the West, everything was filtered through the Vatican. Do you remember they burned people at the stake? Okay, even if they read the scriptures, they burned them at the stake. If they quoted the scriptures, they burned them at the stake. Well, at one point they couldn't hide the books anymore because there were, you know, uh, uh, the Gutenberg Bible was coming out, uh, the Protestant Reformation with uh, um, uh, Martin Luther, and then you know William Tyndale and Oxford. Uh, well, no, uh, uh, John of Wycliffe at Oxford and. 1382, and then uh, when Tyndale comes along in the mid 1500s, and and they're publishing secretly, putting them in sacks of flour, shipping them back to England from Germany or wherever, Scandinavia, and and so finally, you know, they said, okay, we can't stop the people from reading anymore. So I guess what we're going to have to do is then we're going to have to control the doctrine. We're going to have to control the uh, the uh, the words. And so they get the College of Abbreviators, where they slice and dice and mix up the words. They abbreviate them by the Jesuit Curie. I put the cure in your eye. You got mud in your eye. You got a Masonic mortarboard on your head when you graduated from school. And um, and so we thought we don't know anything. We thought we were ready for life, and we haven't learned nothing yet. Because education 
ed, the first two letters, means to remove. Means to remove, okay? So educate isn't uh, enlightenment. It means what they didn't tell you that you wanted to know. Educate, okay? And one more uh, word for read in Webster's 1882 Dictionary uh, is counsel. So when you read, you need to do some counseling, okay? That's Webster, 1882. So that's... Um, that for now, and uh, and so I just wanted to give you a primer on a powerful word, read, because we all say we read, but we don't read. They never actually taught us to read, ladies and gentlemen, and that's what we're going to do here. We're going to learn how to read and um, re-add the riddle, so thank you for that, and continuing on here, and by the way, don't forget, uh, as Prospero indicated, tell your friends, okay? You can call them, and they can uh, listen. Of course, with everything's being recorded, that's good news. And uh, just don't forget uh, the call-in number, 608-566-7295, or on Skype. You can Skype us at Free America Radio. If you don't want to get on the phone, you can just type uh, a message on the Instant Messenger, Free America Radio, all one word. And now, now, ladies and gentlemen, The Great Lies of History is the next feature I'll be doing every day. And, um, and you know, it takes, it takes a million lies to... Uh, to cover the first lie, because we know we're being lied to, don't we? Why? In other words, let me show you. You want to see a lie, a simple lie, how they've lied to us on the most fundamental level, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I'm going to show you. Okay, because what they say is, you know, like in school when we they tell us uh, the four elements. What do they say? They say uh, uh, air. You can write it down because you know it's easier to follow. A I R air. I'm going to show you a great lie of history right now. And um, and then we got water. I got top top right air, top left water. Below water is uh, matter. Bottom bottom left. And then and then they tell us uh, the other one below air would be fire, right? F I R E. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to hear it here. First for the first time, okay? And don't forget that. You heard it here first. Because I'm telling you that you were lied to, that the elements are not water, air, matter, and fire. One of them actually is not an element. Can somebody type it in? If you if you think you know uh, uh, which one it is, is it water, is it air, is it matter, or is it fire? Which one is not an element? Any guesses out there? You want to take a guess? Let's see if somebody can type real quick. One of them is not an element. I will tell you the element after. Um, okay, there's no takers apparently. So, um, okay. Then what I'm going to tell you anyway. Okay, there you go. So the, the one that's not uh, an element, and you've been told it was all your life, is fire. Fire is not an element. It is the destruction of elements. The destruction of elements. Yeah. Prospero, there you go. And uh, you heard me, didn't you? <laughs> no, no, it's not matter, uh, Lynn. It's a fire. Okay, why? Because fire is the destruction of elements. So then what goes there? Does anybody want to guess? Because it's very close. It's relevant. Give me another aspect of fire. Can anybody give me another aspect? It's uh, think of what's missing. What do you see every day? Oh, there's a big lag. Okay, thank you, uh, Lynn. What do you see every day that that allows you to light your fire? What do you see every day that allows you to look on? I mean, I just don't want to un give it. I think it would be cool if somebody. No, not spirit, because spirit is beyond beyond matter, right? Close, but okay, I'm going to give it to you. Here it is. Ready? It is water, air, water, matter, and the primary element is light. Light. They hate the light, don't they, ladies and gentlemen? L-I-G-H-T. Scratch out the fire. And that's what they hid from us. They're occultic. They hide the light, right? They hide the light. Well, guess what? I got one more for you, because air is not an element either. It is the it is the uh, 
the 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 uh, the arena for something else, and it is. I'll just give it to you. It, it, it is not air. It is oxygen. O x y g e n. Oxygen. And guess what? They lied to us again because the truth is, of all the elements that exist within our sphere. Notice I said sphere. All the elements that exist within our sphere. There is more oxygen than any other element. Why? Well, look how big the sky is, right? And all the plankton from the ocean and all the uh, all of the trees that are dying now on Earth are all putting it up into the air. There is more. And I just heard that, by the way. I just learned that a couple of weeks ago. I, I was listening to a YouTube, like I do, and uh, you know, a good documentary. And they and they were talking about stuff. And all of a sudden, there they said it. They said. There's, there, of all the elements in our sphere, there's more oxygen than anything else. And I said, gee, that makes sense. You know, like we breathe every day and take it for granted, right? Uh, but you got to dig dirt for copper or, or gold, and you know, and, but you just breathe and you got it. It keeps you alive. It's the most fundamental and most important uh, ele element there is. That's right, uh, Annie. Uh, light versus darkness. So, so, so the four elements, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen, after all these years, you now know the truth. Water, matter, oxygen, and light. And now what's interesting is if you put water above matter, you know, all you're doing is flipping the M. The M is a code, and you get the W. So from matter, you get water. And, uh, and, 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 and it's been said, you know, that water shouldn't exist. Water just defies all logic in nature. And um, so anyway, I have fun with that. And then um, so that's one. And I'm going to give you another fundamental lie, okay? So the other, and then we're going to talk about who these people are because that's the other big lie. But I'm going to give you one more. Okay. So now with your paper, draw a straight line, uh, a horizontal line. You know, maybe uh, three inches long. A horizontal line, three inches long. And uh, so now you're going to uh, now now let's pretend that that's an electrical cord, and so there's energy flowing through that straight horizontal line. Right. And so we could call that positive. Writing it down flow. There's no obstruction. Right. In that straight horizontal line. Now we're going to uh, we're going to cut off the power. We're going to cut it off. And the way you're going to cut it off is right in the middle of the horizontal line. You know, find center, the center point, and then draw a. A vertical line, uh, you know, about a quarter inch long, not as long as the other one, but just, you know, quarter inch long uh, above and below. And and there we've just blocked. We, we, we constricted. We shut off. We negated the flow of positive energy through the horizontal line because we cut it off with the down line. And so can't you see then that actually the minus symbol is a positive symbol, and that the plus symbol, which is what you created to cut off the flow, the plus symbol is the negative. You see how they reversed everything? And, and not only that, but the cross itself is called the black sun. It's a symbol of, of, of uh, crucifixion. It's a symbol of, uh, of destruction. When you tilt it over, you get the X. But it's also a symbol of the sword, and it's a symbol of the letter T that they used to destroy some of our words. Like, look at the word constitution. You see that silent T in there? Shun, T-I-O-N, shun. When did the T ever become like an S-H? See, they tricked us with the words. They're using it as a weapon to destroy our thinking and to destroy our words, okay? So anyway, there's one more great live history, ladies and gentlemen. The plus symbol is the negative. And the minus symbol is the positive. Go figure, right? They reverse everything, don't they? Isn't that the way the what Lucifer does? She's in the darkness, and but she claims to be the light, and and that which is good they want to demonize, and like all those trolls come on here, hitting hitting with left and right hooks, telling us we're crazy and we're you know uh, we're this and we're that when they're this and that, you know what I mean? So uh, shame on them. So, but that's their job. You see, uh, everybody's got their job. And they've got to have their job, and they're worthless, and they're, 
you know, they're from the dirt and they're going back to the dirt and it's okay because I'm just glad I got my job, you know, and I know you're glad you got your job, which is far better than being the, the, of the, the sellouts that uh, we see every day out there uh, hurting other people, uh, very good people like Matt Rogers, Skywatcher and, and, and others. So, um, okay. So, so what is the third lie? I'm going to give you three today. And uh, what did I say? That it takes a million lies to cover the first lie. What is the first lie, ladies and gentlemen? That's the question, isn't it? That million dollar question. Um, well, the first lie is about who these people really are. And where did they originate from? These people, you see, they call it a new world order. There ain't nothing new under the sun. There is no new world order. It's a it's a it's a, a one world order, but actually it's an old world order. You see, it's an old world order because the game has been played from the beginning of recorded history. There's never been a time when they did not dominate the world and control things. Every now and then, some little group of people got set free and popped out and didn't fit in in the onion, you know. But then they went and killed them. They burned them at the stake, like uh, the Vatican, right? They um, they slice them and dice them and throw them to the lions and eat them all up. But uh, the, the great lie is about who these people are from the beginning. And that's what I'm going to talk about. I'm, I'm going to leave you on the cliffhanger today because I'm going to tell you about who these people are. And I'm going to tell you that nobody gets it right. They're close. They're close. Like, let me give you an example. Uh, you know, I love to watch Graham Hancock and... and uh, uh, Jonathan West and these other uh, great researchers uh, talking about uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Collins, uh, Andrew Collins, I believe uh, he discovered the underground tunnel system in, uh, you know, Giza pyramid um, with his wife. But um, these, um, these, these people all have one thing in common. They don't immediately go off the deep end and try to say, because, they don't know who built all these giant megalithic structures like the pyramids or the temples around the world, all these great monuments. They don't immediately say because they can't tell you who made them. They don't just say, you know, aliens made them because we can't explain it. That's sort of like a, you know, a, a poor excuse uh, answer to a very complex question. You know, because my claim is that all the funny business that's going on in our world is by people. We can, we can absolutely def definitely say one thing. That is true. And that is man is the one who's been messing with you all your life. And as man has been lying to you and manipulating you, and, and we got like 2 million people in America alone under direct targeting, uh, uh, soft targeting or mind control of some sort, heavy mind control. Uh, and the rest of everybody else, the other th uh, 300 million of them are under television control and news media control and uh, preacher control, and uh, teacher control, and uh, mind control, and control of the words. So, so it's about who these people are, and, and how they began the one world order right out the gate. They, what they all say, like Graham Hancock classically says, you know, it's just like these people came on the scene while there were these primitive people here prior. All of a sudden, we get Somebody comes on the scene and they're immediately able to build these giant stone structures so big that we can't lift the blocks with modern day cranes. We can't cut the stone with the uh, accuracy like the polygonal uh, stone cutting that we see from uh, the Hittite civilization to, in Greece all the way to Peru and, you know, the, uh, the mountains in the mountains of Peru and Bolivia. Uh, unbelievable, uh, you know, uh, structures that defies logic and imagination. And at the same time, they're building these giant megalithic structures. They're, they're literally flying anti-gravity Vimana, anti-gravity Vimana flying within minutes and hours to other parts of the world. And then landing on top of those temples, coming out of their spacecraft, shining like a silver star in the sky, coming out of the craft, with blonde hair and blue eyes and white skin, wearing all tinseled gold, sparkling in the sunshine. You think people wouldn't say that they come from another star? The primitive people who have been kept dumb and stupid like they've done to everybody here in America? 
the primitive people would bow down and worship them and say sky gods and sun gods. You see? There's another way of looking at things, ladies and gentlemen. And so where did they come from? That's the question. And how did they do it? And that's what we're going to be talking about in the days ahead. So you better stay tuned and tell your friends if you know what's good for you. So that's the great lies of history that we'll be going to be covering, ladies and gentlemen. And then the, uh, oh, and, uh, and and by the way, if you want to get a copy of the Real Da Vinci Code Etymological Dictionary, my prototype from 2011, 300 pages, eight and a half by 11 of mind-blowing information, it'll be a coffee table, uh, you know, collecting item. To, to tell you the truth, you're going to continually pick it up for research. Um, yes, I am a glutton for punishment and... Uh, and it took me a long time to draft that thing. But it took me, once I finally got the rhythm and knew how I was going to do the style, it took me a year to hammer it out. But it was a piecemeal of a lot of prior work before that. So if you want to get a copy of the Real Da Vinci Code Etymological Dictionary, you can call me after the programming, uh, uh, or you can email me at contact at freeamericaradio.com. And uh, any size donation, I'm just asking... Because uh, we want, you know, we want to publish the Book of Wisdom for those who are in prison, and we want to uh, uh, fund the transliteration project. To uh, I do have some friend, you know, friends that are behind the project. Okay, it's not just me. I've got a a, a couple friends that uh, are are with this project and um, and want to see it come together and are uh, trying, you know, attempting as best they can in the background to help. So uh, so any size donation. Uh, you'll get a copy of the Real Da Vinci Code Etymological Dictionary sent to you on PDF file. Okay, so thank you for your consideration and for your support. And then, uh, and, all, and also your emails, you know, uh, I won't be spamming you. I don't, I don't have uh, any, even have my newsletter right now. All my data is on the other uh, computer. Otherwise, I'd be glad to give you a, a free subscription to the newsletter. Hopefully, we'll be able to get it repaired. I do need funding to repair my computer system and hire somebody as well. You know, I got that going on. Um, gee, I think I'll take a sip of my coffee. Hang on, I've been rolling, and um, I can feel I'm getting hoarse now. I don't, I haven't done this in a long time, so uh, it, I'm feeling it. I apologize. I had that sip right onto the microphone. <laughs> Gosh, I got to put my headset up when I do that. Um, frightening. Okay, we got Anne, Anne, Annie McIntyre. Frightening that a few even read anymore. Yeah, that is rather frightening to think people uh, still don't get it. I was taught to see Jack run. Run Jack, yeah, oh yeah, Dick and Jane. I remember that. Run Jack, run. And uh, never could, never could uh, grok. So much confusion in the English language. And language isn't the word we want to use. It's diction. And even diction is not correct. It's le lection. Uh, so more on that. All gods came from outer space including star seeds. Well, that's a, it's a cosmic story, and that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, so, uh, so again, the inner, inner word, we already did that, and that's um, what I subtitle as the pirate sea of words. That's a play on words, the pirate sea. Uh, and, and there's Prospero again coming up. The public as a whole, uh, despite our computer error, is the rabble of the Middle Ages. <laughs> that's right. They're, they'll be happy to go get a... We saw that with the protesting, right? They were happy to get clubs and sticks and uh, and beat somebody over the head. They'd love to burn them at the stake if they could get away with it. Um, of course, they have a political agenda. It's, I mean, the secret agents are there. The rest of the crowd just follows along with them. But the leaders are always the secret agents, you know, that the secret societies. Um, and so, um, and then what I'll be doing, and I'm hoping I'll have a voice left for tomorrow because it's going to take me a little bit to get my rhythm. And I, I and, and I am long-winded. You know, I intended to make this a very short uh, presentation, but I, I have too much to uh, talk about here. So the original gospel is um, uh, an axiom I use for another lost writing that I discovered, and uh, and it is um, uh, has a false title on it. This book was published in the 1800s. Well, transliterated in the 1800s, then published in 1919. I think for the first time by a uh, civil war chaplain and, uh, and, and yet uh, the introduction is a false introduction and it was actually, um, it had to actually come out of the Vatican, uh, the library, you know, the, the basement of the Vatican library or out of the uh, library of uh, Sophia, the, 
uh, over there in Constantinople, Turkey, because these were where all of our books were taken. And this is the original gospel. Okay. Thank you, uh, Lynn. Honey will soothe my throat. Thank you very much. I threw some in my coffee, so I got to drink a little more. Um, so, uh, so I'll be sharing with you the greatest story, the greatest story never told. Okay. Because, um, uh, you know, as a researcher and, and starting in my early twenties, reading the books, I ended up with 2,000 books on the shelf. I kept reading about a certain book, and any time the book was mentioned, something negative was said about it. And they said, well, you know, you don't really want to read that book because it's spurious and it doesn't uh, jive with our dogma that we're, we've been spoon fed from, you know, when we were in our diapers. The dogma doesn't fit. And, um, and so, you know, for like 20 plus years, 25 years, when I could have researched and got the book, I didn't get it. And then one day when I was in a used bookstore in Mesa, Arizona, I, I looked on the shelf and there was this book, you know, and I pulled it off and looked at it and I said, whoa, whoa, I can't believe this. This is scripture. You know, I'm reading it through. 182 chapters, in fact, ladies and gentlemen, 182 chapters. And you know what? Our gospel, so Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are all in there. They came out of this source document. A little exception to John, because John has uh, some exclusive, uh, you know, elements within his. And um, but for the most part, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and a little of John are in here, and they came out 182 chapters. Matthew's only 28 chapters. I'm talking 182. The entire life story of Yeshua, the greatest story, never told. Okay, and we're gonna. I'm gonna read it. Uh, here a little bit a chapter maybe a chapter every time I do this and we'll uh, and I'll read it in the original thought I transliterate as I read and I'll get you to hear original thought in action okay you know and you know as I'm talking here I'm thinking of uh, another uh, translator and that would be uh, not Moffat not Moffat right that's uh, that's the Peshitta that's no that's Murdoch okay Murdoch is the Peshitta from the 1800s of the Eastern uh, text, but uh, James Murdoch, James Moffat. Okay, James Moffat. He did the translation called the Bible in uh, about 1925, 1922, give or take. And he uh, he. Uh, oh no, let me pull up a different screen. I'm realizing I got another screen I can share with you, so you can see the uh, work I'm I'm doing here. I think you've got another view now. And I just, I apologize, I should have thrown that up a little bit now that I'm diverting your attention. Um, so James Moffat, he wrote the Bible based on a free, uh, his free interpretation of the Greek, not following any dogma. And, um, and so he did a lecture in England in, you know, around 1922. And I have a copy of that lecture. And, and so I read it in there and he made a profound statement. And I never... You know, it's like I kind of knew this, but yet it doesn't click until somebody actually puts it on the table and says it. And, and so hear me out, okay? He said in there that of all the religious writings of all the cultures, you know, the majority of the cult, the literary cultures, of all the literary cultures, uh, religious cultures in the world, the collection of writings of the New Testament for the Christian tradition is the smallest collection of religious writings for any tradition in the world. Now, does that make sense? When we know our guy, Yeshua, the Mashiach, Jesus the Christ, made the entire universe, does it make sense that our tradition, the greatest story ever told, would be the smallest collection, those 27 teeny-weeny little letters and a couple bigger gospels, a couple bigger books, Corinthians and Romans, add book of Acts, you know, that, that, that would be the smallest collection of religious writings of all traditions. Well, the truth is, ladies and gentlemen, that we had a library. We had a library in Caesarea, Caesarea, correctly, but Caesarea, Syria. And the last librarian was Eusebius. He wrote the book called the history of the church. And he was commissioned by Constantine to, uh, to grab that, get me that library, pack it up, and bring it over here to Constantinople, Turkey, 
Eusebius, or before I before I come over there and beat you over the head. Yes, sir, Constantine, I'll bring it right over. And so they taught, brought the li entire library over there to Turkey, and uh, if they didn't take some of it to the Vatican, and they they uh, and then they decided through the the Nicene Council, not a very nice council. The Nicene Council means secret council. Through the secret council, not very nice. Uh, circa eighteen, uh, through the circa three hundred twelve A.D. I think three twelve A.D. Give or take somewhere in that area. Uh, they just they voted on with all of their sellouts on what would be the received twenty seven teeny weeny little books that we were going to have their permission to read, and that's where we get our New Testament today, what we call New Testament from this secret council where political tyrants decided what we were going to read and nobody gets it. You know, they, they will actually condemn you for uh, telling other people about other scriptures that you've found in other places that are not included within our 27 teeny weeny little collection of letters. Actually, you know, we, we have what first Peter, second Peter. Well, guess what? There's a whole library. Peter has a whole, and his name isn't Peter, by the way. It's Kefe. Kefa in the corrupt form and Kefe in the more accurate original. Kefe, Shemon Kefe, who we call Simon Peter. And, uh, and he, wrote a, he, wrote a, he wrote his own little library. I mean, come on, he was the head of the church, right? He's communicating with the people all around that part of the world. What do you think? You just wrote two letters? Oh, boy. Now, I know you commissioned me, Jesus, but I'm not that big on work and writing. You know what I mean? Come on. They established the greatest um, cultural renaissance of spirituality in the history of mankind. And they wrote probably on a weekly basis, if not once a month. Yeah. Kef kefa or kefe. The kefe, uh, the more accurate, though, Lynn. Thank you. And so... So, uh, so in the in um, the apocrypha, one of the books I'm going to share with you, uh, two volumes out of Germany, uh, the New Testament apocrypha. In there is a letter he wrote to James, and he says, "You know what? These people are taking my writings, and they're retranslating them, and they're putting into my mouth things that I never said." And he says, "So we got to stop giving out these writings, and we got to prove these people and have them stay with us a year." And then not give him all the writings, but give him some of them. He's, so he had his own collection. You know, he probably had 30, at least 30, if not 50 or 60 or 100 letters. They, they kept, that's what they did. You see, we've been lied to about this. They, they actually tell us in these propagandistic documentaries that, uh, you know, well, actually nobody wrote the gospel for the first 40 or 60 years. What do you think? They were stupid or something? You know, it was, why you know? Let me. I'm going to ask a question, and I'm going to give it the answer. Why did James and John, the two brothers, follow Yeshua everywhere he went with Kefe Peter? Those three always went everywhere Yeshua went, with few exceptions. While everyone else might have stayed behind, but if everyone stayed behind, Peter, James, and John—not their names. Close enough. You know what I'm, what I'm talking about. Peter, James, and John. They follow him. Why? Because James and John, Yaakov and Yochanan, were Levitical scribes. And they were the two witnesses that had to write down everything Yeshua did. They were, they were, they were proficient at writing. And that's why they always had to go everywhere he went, because they were two witnesses recording Everything Yeshua did. That's why they went up to the, the visitation on the mount. Just the three of them. And, um, you know, and so they were called sons of Zebedee. But sons of Zebedee, uh, in this political document called the gospel, you know, where people could have their heads cut off, they couldn't say that what they really were, that they were Levitical scribes and priests, and so they were called the sons of Zebedee. How come we never meet Zebedee? Yet his name was so important to mention that they were sons of Zebedee. Because Zebedee is a code. And it means the sons with the gift. 
The sons with the gift of what? The sons with the gift of writing. And yes, they wrote right from the beginning volumes. That's how this story has been preserved. You think they're going to suddenly decide to write it down 60 years later? You know, it's amazing the lies that they perpetrate against our tradition, friends, and, and how we all bite off on it, you know, and we just repeat whatever we're heard, what, you know, somebody else has said and don't have the ability to process and, you know, and to find the books. They're stealing our books from us. You know, we got a it's a it's a labor. I can't tell you how many tens of thousands of dollars I've got books. I paid a couple hundred dollars for it. You know, like Wycliffe from 1382, the first English translation of the Bible that ever came out. Uh, you know, hey, hello, Lynn Rath. Good to have you. you. We got to. Don't worry. We got this recorded. You haven't missed anything. And uh, but, um, you know, it's just amazing. So we're going to we're going to prove who the liars really are out there. And um, and, uh, you know, I can watch a documentary and I don't care if it's on Israel or Jerusalem or on Jesus or you name it. Very first thing, 10 things they say, boom, 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 in the documentary is an outright lie and fabrication of our history. They control the, the discussion. They control the dialogue. They control the, the museums. They control the libraries. They control academia. They control it all. And so we have been given part truth and part lie. And we and we have, we 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 regurgitate more half truths than we can ever imagine, ladies and gentlemen. It's it's a tragedy, and um, so you know it's like we're still in the Middle Ages, but that's okay. We're coming out now. We're coming out now because the Forbidden History series is here. What they didn't want you to know, but we tell right here. And um, I do need your prayers. Okay, um, the beast is all around me, and. Uh, <laughs> but I don't want to get into that today uh, or, or any day. I'm, I mean, I'm not going to focus on that because the father has uh, protected me. You know, that's the good news. But I, I do want to say it like it is. You know, I want to get it out there while we have a chance because I, I, I have some wonderful friends on that I've made on YouTube and other friends. And, uh, and, and everybody deserves to know the truth, right? Especially the good people, the people that have dedicated themselves to truth. And, um, you know, the... Uh, uh, the, 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 the the innocent people, you know, the one people with no agenda, they come into this world, they're raising babies and, you know, and they want, they want a wholesome life. They want to be able to transcend. So in going back to that big lie now, right? The, what's, what's the big lie? Uh, a million lies to cover the first lie. Well, the other uh, avenue of lies that they've given us is so that we cannot transcend, you see, because the wicked occult, because they're not going back, you know, to the light which is, you know, where we fell from. We fell from the light. We have to go back to the light. So since they're not going back, they're, whole, they're working overtime, staying up late at night, making sure we're never going to go back to the light. Okay? So that's why they control publishing. That's why they control the bullpit, uh, the bullpit, the pulpit, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, all run by Jesuits and Masons. Um, they control everything, you know, and um, you name it. And so and they got everyone on their sports watching the game, and in Webster's 1382, uh, not 1382, uh, 1828, I, I was thinking of Wycliffe, uh, 1828, Webster's first dictionary, you look under sports, under sports and Webster's, 200 years ago almost now, it says sports means dun, 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 diversion, diversion, you get it? Sports means diversion, you know what? Competition never had anything to do with games. But when you went to school, the whole objective was to make everybody competent. And, and when they, like in the late 1800s, you know, created football and these other games, then they changed the word from being made competent to competition. They switched out the word and gave it a new flavor, you see. So... That's what they did, ladies and gentlemen. And by the way, if you um, another way you can support the broadcast here, if you like what we're doing, and if you if you know that um, you're hearing something you can't get anywhere else, um, then um, and before they you know come and get me, uh, then uh, 
you can support this program and your health at the same time by going to this website. Go to healthwalk, all one word, healthwalk.basicreset.com. That's healthwalk.basicreset.com. And I can tell you that uh, that some of the products there have uh, t- turned the lives around of some people that have had terminal problems. I, I can't get into it because, you know, we can't talk about that stuff, but you know what I'm talking about. There's some products there, uh, the beta-glucan in particular, and also uh, the ionized minerals. Ionized minerals called ionite. Okay, literally dying plants on the vine when sprayed with this stuff came back to life after they froze overnight, like tomatoes that were black, turn back, and you can watch the video there. But I know the owners of the company, um, uh, uh, Fred and uh, Kim, uh, they, uh, they, they are dedicated Christians, uh, Ken and, uh, uh, Fred and Kim Kaufman, and they are dedicated to uh, serving people. They have come up with the perfect program uh, that uh, supports people's health and also can help uh, people that are struggling today. No obligation to buy every month, nothing like that. It's real simple. You buy what you want when you want. And, and, uh, and if you sign up under healthwalk.basicreset.com, it will help this broadcast, uh, my friends. Okay, so I uh, usually end with a song. You know, I, I put on uh, my favorite music, but it's all on my other computer. I've got no uh, way to do that right now. And so um, I, you remember, this is a call. In, you know, I got a minute here if you want to call in, if you want to make a comment, uh, 608-566-7295. I'm feeling it in my throat. I've uh, had a wonderful first program today, getting my feet wet, uh, getting back on the horse, diving off the high dive one more time, and and um, and uh, saying it like it is. There's nothing, you know, that's sweeter than being able to say it like it is, and to know the score, and to know who they are, and you know, and to know who you are, and who we are, are able to become within the great spirit of life, Yeshua, uh, our Redeemer, and the Great Father of Light, who they call Yahweh, but uh, when you uh, learn more about the, the what they did with the letters and the words, it's more correctly Yahweh, Yahweh, um, or Yavohe, and um, and we'll talk about it. I'll also do uh, graphic presentations uh, to help uh, you know with that as well. So uh, so I don't hear the phone ringing and nobody has skyped me, and so um, uh, I just uh, want to thank all of the friends who come on and said hello. Uh, all of you uh, certainly mean a lot uh, to me. I've, you know, you're wonderful people. You're all people that uh, have w- woke up to the dilemma that we all face, which is we're all in this together. Uh, there's a bunch of psychopaths that uh, literally want to uh, drink our blood. And um, thank you, uh, Lynn. Thank you so much. And uh, and so we, um, we uh, make it a better world first by working within ourselves. And, and once we can really fig, you know, figure out our true nature of being uh, spiritual beings and not a, an animal of the flesh, the flesh is the illusion. Just like you walk into your house, you don't say, hi, I'm, I'm the house. You know, you're not the house. And so therefore you're not the body. You are the spirit within the house of your body waiting to be set free. And uh, there's a one minute lag. Okay. Uh, Lynn, thank you for that. Uh, I don't know how you figure that out, but okay. And um, so, so we just we. Um, I hope that you'll come back. Uh, I I don't know. I I've, I've got to figure out my time window for doing this. So I don't know yet. I want I want to do this in the morning uh, when I have a lot of good energy, and um, so I'm, I'm you know trying to lock in on a window. That way you'll know when I'm there. If you want to call in again, I you know you're welcome to call in every week. If you want to just say hi, give me an audio check or. Or if you got some important information you want to share or a sky report, you know, uh, most of you are sky watchers here today. And just, um, uh, you know, let's, uh, since we're in this together, uh, have a, a forum where we can talk. And, and, I, and, and I want to answer questions. I've, I know I've done a lot of leg, leg work as a political activist. You know, I've learned a lot. I learned a lot getting beaten, beaten up by the system. You, uh, you learn out who they are real quick and you, and you know who you are. And that's why they're beating you up. That's why you're laying there bleeding, kick, you know, kicked in the teeth and, uh, and wondering, okay, what just happened to me? Or, you know, get, getting run over by an automobile. That was only the first time they tried with automobiles. After that, I watched where I'm going and three times they didn't, they missed me. Okay. Because I, I watch where I go. 
And um, unfortunately, Dr. Lorraine uh, Hurley didn't uh, look where she was going. And, um, and, and, uh, and I would have chided her for riding a bicycle with what she was doing, you know. But um, anyway, uh, we're, we're all in this together. And, uh, and, and, and so we, we, need to, we need to absolutely know that we know that we know. And, and it's going to start with the words. And, and so I'm, I'm going to be uh, doing a presentation. Uh, this will be, uh, I know, my most important work because all of this is now a collection of everything I did prior. Everything I did prior was like a, uh, uh, a trial run, you know. And, uh, and I've never been more ready to do my transliteration project than I am right now. I'm, I'm foremost adept in the Indo-Germanic Aramaic mother tongue, which goes back to Hadam when uh, the Gnosis was breathed into his nostrils. Uh, he became a conscious being. Uh, that is what I'm talking about, preceding the Hebrew and the Greek, because they are the diversion. The Hebrew and the Greek are controlled by the priesthood, you see. And so it, it fits the old axiom that says, you know, they don't care um, what the questions are as long as you're asking the wrong questions, okay? And so we've got to get past the illusions and the control. Our world is controlled by priesthoods. And, um, and, I, and I, I'm sure, you know, many of you already, you know, know that to some degree. But we compare to veil. So if you can hit me up with the right question, you know, where, you know, whether we're talking about the layers of the onion, like, you know, they talk about Bilderberg, the Queen of England, the, the, the Jewish banking, you know, all of this. How does that all fit in? You know, I don't care. I was a political activist. I can talk politics as well. Uh, but I don't I don't give credit to the grand illusion or the cartoon charade called Washington, D.C., because it's an illusion. It's a diversion. It is about what's coming in the sky, ladies and gentlemen. That's all that matters now, okay? Something is coming our way, and they are going to keep us diverted with sports, with war, with political charades, handouts, gifts, you name it, anything, but don't look up there. And that's why they're spraying our skies and poisoning us, and they destroy the ozone layer. And that's why we're getting bombarded with UV, B, and C, and people are getting cancer now. The final result is cancer. The more you get the more you take in because you can't get rid of it once you get the radiation in your body. And all the best to you, Prospero. Thank you so much. And so with that, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to remind you, don't forget, if you want to know the future, then just look for the forbidden history because it's right here. I'm Desert Owl. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you again, Lord willing. Thank you.